For Dugascopy TV, I'm Alex Isaac, looking at the week ahead with Acumen Management's Ken Vexler. Ken, what do you think are the big economic events this week? Uh, look, there are a few things out this week uh, affecting various continents, not least of which Europe, and the key standout for, uh, for the Eurozone will be the European Court of Justice ruling on Wednesday about the OMT and rather the legality of its current form. Um, that in itself will have implications for potential QE, be it uh, announced on the 22nd of Jan at the next ECB meeting or potentially further out. But certainly that will influence um, the constituent parts of, of any potential QE to be announced. Uh, outside of that, we've also got uh, Australian employment data, which um, seems in recent prints to have levelled off a little bit to the downside, meaning that there is a potential surprise to the upside. Uh, admittedly, the data series is somewhat volatile from month to month, so a swing uh, or a reversal of last month's print could be uh, in the offing. Outside of that, um, we're sort of US-focused with retail sales from the US out on Wednesday, and perhaps, and certainly most, more importantly rather, US CPI uh, being printed on the Friday. Um, and speaking of CPI, we've also got the UK inflation print tomorrow uh, coming out. So they're probably the standout um, economic events that I'd be looking for. Is there a strong possibility the Eurozone could spiral out of control? That possibility has been, I suppose, overshadowing you know, price action and general politics for the last few, you know, three, four, five years. Uh, spiral is probably a little excessive. Uh, we've seen um, moves you know, in that direction over the course of the last few years, but they've been relatively controlled. Um, bond yields have obviously led the way in terms of indicating general sentiment, but I think the key now stands, uh, or the key event now stands with the uh, Greek elections due out in a couple of weeks' time, and whether that means we'll formally see a new government and what that means in terms of potential debt restructuring, or certainly if that then uh, fails to be conclusive and further elections are to be held, uh, in the coming weeks beyond that. So I think calling, uh, calling the Eurozone spiraling, spiraling rather out of control is probably somewhat excessive, but certainly the downside risks are well and truly known by now. Finally, are there any currency pairs that interest you? Yeah, I'm looking at, uh, at the moment predominantly something like the Aussie CAD, which I feel has the potential to run uh, a fair bit higher. Uh, it had a <coughs> fairly significant move to the upside towards the tail end of last week, and I'm waiting for a bit of a retracement or consolidation of that move sort of into around the 96.50, 80 area, um, and looking for an overall move higher into around 98.5, just on the back of the fact that uh, CAD weakness is likely to persist. Certainly we've not seen a bottom to oil prices just yet, and that obviously plays a fairly significant role in terms of the pricing of uh, the Canadian dollar. Whereas, as mentioned, the employment data out of Australia and certainly now talk abating about potential cuts from the RBA in the, in the interest rate uh, could see a, a squeeze to the Aussie uh, in the, on the upside. Outside of that, something like the, um, the CAD-yen is also uh, something I'm focusing on at the moment, but that's more likely from a purely range play perspective with the, uh, with the downside currently being held into around 99.5 and, and the top side around 101.5. So given that we're presently more or less sat in the middle of that range, there's nothing directly on the radar presently, but certainly something that I'm keeping an eye on. Thank you, Ken. For more in-depth analysis of what's making the financial news this week, be sure to check in with Dukascoffee TV. Goodbye for now.